Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following everything happening with the latest gaming hardware. I'm Jimmy Hatfield, and as always, I'm joined by Max Scoville, host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. Howdy. And Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Greetings, Damon. Hello there. And we find ourselves on the eve of summer gaming event season uh, in, the, uh, in the wake of, of E3, RIP. Uh, all sorts of events have popped up. They happen all summer long. We're just about to kick off our own IGN Live happening June 7th through the 9th here in LA. Jeff Keighley has his Summer Game Fest happening. Of course, we have the big Xbox Summer Showcase happening on June 9th. Later on in the summer, there's Gamescom in Germany and Tokyo Game Show in Japan. So a lot happening, but we think maybe the first one, if history tells us anything. There's also going to be a, a PlayStation State of Play. Not announced yet, but Sony typically uh, shares one of those uh, events with us around this time. Last year was actually on May 24th, the day this episode goes live. So hopefully we're not immediately uh, out of date <laughs> uh, by, the, uh, by the time this episode goes up. But assuming, let's just go ahead and assume that PlayStation does have a State of Play coming up soon. And let's make some predictions for what we expect from both Xbox and Sony's showcases this year. So why don't we go ahead and start with Xbox. We've got some different categories. We'll have some safe predictions, some that might be a bit of a stretch, and then we've got a couple of things that would just be really wild if they were to be revealed. So starting with Xbox Showcase, June 9th, Ryan, uh, we know that Xbox is supposed to have Avowed and Indiana Jones and The Great Circle coming later this year. We don't have release dates yet. I think we'll finally get release dates for those. Yeah, I would be stunned if we didn't. Um, it'd be great to get a new gameplay trailer for each one, release date at the end. So I think that's pretty much as close to a lock as you can get without actually having it <laughs> completely leaked mm -hmm. for real on the internet. So uh, yeah, it'd be, it'll be good to see how Avowed has come along. I mean, my personal criticism of that one, because it was it's shaping up really well, but uh, I think myself and a lot of folks, the one big thing that stuck out after their uh, developer direct showing was, uh, there aren't really any any like hit animations going on mm -hmm. here when you when you hit an enemy with your sword or, or a magic spell, and the team at Obsidian did did post after that saying, yep, yeah, that's that's being worked on. So uh, be good to see Avowed come along and. Indiana Jones, we did get a pretty decent look at at that developer direct back in January. So um, anything else, I'll be thrilled because <laughs> this is Machine Games, a studio that has a, a pretty flawless track record so far. Uh, and I'm so I'm expecting big things from Indiana Jones. But um, I think the I mean, obviously, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is there's a redacted direct right. after the Xbox showcase, which is for Call of Duty, of course as we can all plainly see. Um, but I think the the other piece of that announcement that will will get a good rouse out of the crowd uh, will be the confirmation that is, you know, it's already, the Wall Street Journal already reported this and they're not one to just post random gaming rumors mm -hmm. that uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will launch directly into Xbox Game Pass. So that will be a big deal as well. And then I think the other safe one that comes immediately to mind is a game that maybe not a, a ton of core IGN Xbox gamers think about, but a lot of people love this game, and the, the last one got a 10 out of 10 on IGN, and that's Microsoft Flight Simulator. We know we've got a new one coming this year. I expect we'll get a new trailer and a release date for mm. that one as well. Okay, Max, what are some safe predictions for a Sony state of play? Keeping in mind, Sony has said they don't have any new games in their big franchises coming this year. Well, a couple safe bets. I'm, I'm really hoping these are true, but uh, Silent Hill 2, the remake, is supposed to come out this year. We've mm -hmm. seen a little bit from that. We've seen gameplay. I feel like a release date for that seems you know, very, very likely, assuming that's still on track to come out this fall. Uh, in the kind of same department as that, one that I'm really hoping we get sooner than later is the, uh, the Snake Eater remake, mm -hmm. from you know, also from Konami, which we've seen glimpses of. But we've been hearing rumors about that for ages, and we only kind of just recently got a uh, you know, proper sort of cinematic reveal we haven't really seen gameplay um those were both included in a sort of sony you know 2024 look ahead mm -hmm. video that dropped in the very beginning of the year and at that point i don't think anyone really expected them to come out in 2024 like it seemed very uh it seemed you know it, it kind of took people off guard uh but i'm i'm very hopeful that you know konami comes out with a couple of really killer remakes um i know that a lot of people have you know ill will towards konami but these are also great games that you know, an entire generation of people probably haven't been able to play very easily. So if they do them justice, that's that's cool with me. That's fine with me. Uh, on the Sony front, the big thing we've been hearing the most rumors about isn't so much a game as it is the PlayStation 5 Pro. We've been mm. talking about that kind of nonstop on this show right here. And I don't 
I don't see Sony revealing that during this, you know, showcase or state of play or whatever they call it. I feel like that's going to get its own its own thing. Maybe we'll get like a little tease about that, but I'm kind of, you know, skeptical on that front. Uh, another thing that's supposed to come out this year is Concord, mm-hmm. which is from Firewalk Studios, and we've seen virtually nothing from this. It is a uh, PvP, I think PvP, PvE uh, first-person shooter, and we got a trailer that had a really cool really cool song playing and some great visuals, including a very realistic hamburger in space. <laughs> but everyone's kind of wondering, what is this game? What is it about? I believe it's slated for PS5 and PC, so this very could easily be a nice follow-up to Helldivers too, uh, assuming Sony, you know, takes the same approach and really launches it on both platforms day and date. Again, we've seen very, very little from this game, so it 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 could be further along than we than we think. It could be, you know, it could be a ways out. But I last I checked, it had a 2024, um, you know, attached to it. So that would be nice to see. That burger the does look good. It's a good. It's a nice burger. They got the little. They got the the jiggle physics on it for some reason. It's. I love. I mean, I love the the style of this game, but also, what is it? You you know what I'm saying? Like I just. I. It's one of those very much. They're selling us. They're selling a sizzle and virtual hamburgers, not steak. Uh, on kind of other stuff. There's. We know. We know. In, you know, Wolverine is in the works, but I feel like we're gonna see some Spider-Man DLC long before that. Uh, Insomniac's been working on something they've got they keep busy over there and you know we got some pretty substantial dlc packs for the original spider-man not to mention miles morales and it would be really cool to see something similar kind of tacked on to the uh, marvel spider-man 2 there's also fair games which is i think jade raymond's that's right uh, studio i kind of i kind of get this one mixed up with the creative assembly game hyenas i feel like it's a very similar yeah. sort of ne- neon aesthetic so you know, interested to see more of that. Uh, elsewhere in the realm of games as a service, there's uh, Zenless Zone Zero, which is the kind of what urban urban action RPG from the um, Genshin Impact team, mm-hmm. which also has cool art direction. That's uh, I believe on track for a, a, a summer release. I yeah. think we saw like a leaked uh, a leaked release date of somewhere in July on the Apple Store, I believe. Yeah, so I think that's been confirmed we'll... for July third, actually. Oh, nice. So there we go. Yeah, there's that, and then. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It would be nice if Sony... Uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm better equipped to tell you what I don't think will show up than what I do <laughs> because Sony's been so playing things so close to the chest. Um, I actually have my own uh, prediction, I think. I, I think it's, it's been four years since the PS5 is out. That means it's been four years since Astrobot's Playroom. I think it's time for another Astrobot game, uh, maybe, something with a, maybe something a little bit larger, uh, like a, uh, maybe like a full-size 3D platformer with Astrobot there. I think that's... Um, I think that's something that people would welcome with open arms. I know me and my son would, my four-year-old son. So, could tie into the PS5 <laughs> Pro, too, a nice little tech showcase. Yep, could want, maybe want to tie into the PS5 Pro, just like they uh, use it to sort of show off the PS5 in the first place. Okay, moving on to some uh, predictions that might be a bit of a stretch. Uh, I see on Xbox here, Ryan, you put State of Decay 3 here. Why, why do you consider that a stretch, considering how long it's been in development now? Well, just because we haven't seen anything from mm. it in quite a while, uh, that's yeah, which I know may, might seem a little sort of contradictory, but there is that that sort of um, lack of enthusiasm that that tends to set in after you haven't seen something that's been announced for quite a long time. So that's the only reason I really have it as a little bit of a stretch. But I I will say I am I am optimistic that this is finally going to be the time because we haven't heard anything about there being a lot of trouble on the project or people leaving or anything like that. So hopefully this is finally going to be the year where we get a proper look at State of Decay 3. And and I remember, I mean, Damon, you, you remember well back when the first one was about to drop and we got that build yeah. at IGN before the game had come out as part of what I think was might have been the last summer of arcade. Hmm. And we were all just enamored with it. It yeah. was just like, this game's incredible. It's like a, it's like a post-apocalyptic zombie RPG, basically. And... And two, you know, I was so optimistic and excited for two and hoping that it was going to be, you know, Microsoft had bought the studio and that it was going to have higher production value and have fewer bugs in it. And it's still kind of shipped in a bit of a messy state, but they put a ton of work into it over time and it's in a great place now. So I'm really hoping that State of Decay 3 is going to be the one that from the jump, from day one, really fulfills the ultimate very, very sky high potential of what State of Decay is. And then moving on from that, uh, you know, a little bit of a stretch, maybe, 
hopefully not, uh, is Gears of War 6, mm -hmm. or just Gears 6, right. as Microsoft seems to now want to call it. Uh, we got that message from the Coalition a good few years ago now that it said, we are working on stuff, but you're not going to hear from us for a while. So it's just a question of, is it going to be this year that we do finally hear the inevitable Gears 6 announcement, or is it not going to be till next year? It's going to be on Unreal Engine 5. The Coalition already has some experience there after working with Epic on the Matrix Awakens tech demo right. that uh, looked awesome. You could run around uh, in, in that and just see the amazing technical features in action. So I'm hoping this is going to be the year for Gears 6, but I also wouldn't be surprised if, it's, if this isn't quite it. Next year, I think, if it doesn't show up this year the next year gear six would move into my safe hmm. prediction category so it. it's the it's got to be coming up semi soon um blade probably too early on that so i'm calling that a stretch mm -hmm. contraband is in that same category with state of decay 3 where it got announced and then we've literally seen absolutely nothing it got announced with a cinematic trailer you know we don't even yeah. know what it looks like uh so is now the time that we find out what that game truly is? I hope so. Still in stretch territory. And then I hate to do this to you, Damon, because I know you're super excited know, for this I know one. I what but you're going to do. Perfect Dark. You know, we had that wonderful investigative report by our award-winning investigative reporter, Rebecca Valentine, last year, who uh, the this, this short version is it had been a, a pretty bumpy ride for a bit, but it sounds like in partnership with Crystal Dynamics, the game is really on track now. So my hope is that maybe this is the year they they kind of re-unveil it. Uh, but it also, I think there's a, a an equal, if not better, chance that it's not quite ready to be shown again just yet. Uh, Everwild also falls into that stretch category. That one's kind of fallen off the face of the earth. I would be a little surprised if we do see it next month, but I hope we do because I want to see what else Rare has been cooking up after Sea of Thieves. And then Fable, uh, we did get that sort of quote-unquote gameplay teaser, which hmm. did technically show in-engine stuff happening uh, last year. And it was a great, you know, really great tone piece, showed us more of what this Fable is and how, what sort of the unique take is that Playground is taking on this. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I think it might, this to me feels like a stretch because I, I think it's probably going to be another year before we see Fable. And then when we do... If it's in, if indeed it's in 2025, we'll see a lot more of it at that point. All right, so some stretches for Sony and PlayStation State of Play. Uh, Max Wolverine announced three years ago now. We know that's happening, but there was that big leak from Insomniac last year. So like we've seen the game, we we know what it looks like, what to expect. I don't know. Is is it time to show more of that game, or or was the leak a setback? What do you think? That's hard to say. I. I've sort of tried not to look at the leak stuff myself just because that was such a such a bummer sure. for you know anybody trying to work on that game. I will say that it is a really good time to show off anything related to Wolverine. We got, you know, X-Men 97 just wrapped up. People are extremely hyped for X-Men, myself included. And then this summer we've got, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine, which I have the latest poster open on my browser in front of me. And it, I realize this is something that I've wanted since I was like seven years old. It's just bright yellow and blue Wolverine fighting Deadpool in red. It just looks awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I feel like Insomniac carting out a trailer for Wolverine that isn't just the CG sitting in a bar trailer. It was, uh, I, you know, I'm looking back at how they handled the Spider-Man reveal, and it was definitely a long road between that's announcement and actually getting a proper gameplay thing. I remember us being kind of like, was this was just this just smoke and mirrors? Was this the work of Mysterio once again? Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, you know, we there's so much information about Wolverine has has leaked that it would be kind of cool if they. I guess put some out there officially just so that there's some stuff we can talk about without it being, uh, I don't know, illegitimate, yeah. what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, elsewhere, um, you know, Gorilla's got something going on. Horizon is, we're going to continue to see Horizon stuff. We just got word that they are doing a uh, Lego Horizon game, which wasn't on my bingo card for sure. Mm -hmm. Something we heard about was a Horizon multiplayer game, which again, haven't seen anything of that, but between the fact that we've gotten, you know, a couple, you know, massive Horizon games, we've got the, the VR game, now we're getting a Lego game. I'm wondering if this is starting to become sort of Sony's flagship, you know, IP, mm -hmm. and, and it's it helps that it's, 
you know, it's T-rated, so it's got some mature appeal, but it's also a little bit, you know, more suitable for all ages, you know, unlike some of their more gritty, sad dad games. And yeah, were they to come out with a multiplayer component for this, I think that would really help sort of flesh out this universe a bit. And it, you know, it, it probably probably helps that Herman Holst is now running PlayStation, right. and this is from his studio. Uh, elsewhere in the you know Sony family, there's whatever Sucker Punch is doing. Ghost of Tsushima just just shipped on PC. It was the I believe I don't think we have sales numbers yet, but it had the the most concurrent players in its launch weekend of any single player Sony game to date, beating out God of War, mm-hmm. which bodes really well for you know more Sony PC releases. I don't think we're gonna see Ghost of Tsushima for a while. I feel like that <sighs> is still a ways off as much as I would like to be wrong about that. And then, of course, Naughty Dog, yeah. which the last we heard from Naughty Dog was that they're not making a multiplayer <laughs> game. So that's... Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. been four years since Last of Us Part Two. They remade Part 1 and they remastered Part 2. Like, now they've canceled this multiplayer game. We don't, we don't know what Naughty Dog is doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Neil Druckmann ca- kind of casually dropped at the very tail end of the, the making of Part 2, the... Uh, uh, grounded documentary they put out pretty much saying yeah we're open to the idea yeah we've got some ideas we've been kicking around and you would think that when you're in the process of making two massive games there are ideas bouncing around in your head that you have to save for later but this is sort of the most the most kind of substantial statement he's made towards this being a trilogy or at least continuing but I can't help but feel like Last of Us Part 3 is probably a ways off and I I don't know I, I think there's going to be something I think there's going to be a new IP. Uh, Hmm. I don't think we're going to see it necessarily in the coming weeks, but I would love to be wrong yet again. But yeah, Naughty Dog, uh, Last of Us is huge, but I I can't help but feel like they want to they want to branch out a little bit more, too. All right. In terms of uh, some uh, little more out there predictions, Ryan, there have been lots of rumors about an Xbox handheld. Not confirmed, of course. It would be pretty wild if they're (laughs) Phil holds it up. Here it is. The Xbox handheld. Yeah, I, this is my crazy prediction. Not not because I don't think it's plausible or possible, but just because, and it will happen. I'm very confident that it will. Uh, but it just, whenever it happens, that's crazy that Xbox is going to make their own handheld. Um, you know, I've I've enjoyed my Steam Deck, but I will uh, I will move on and pick up an Xbox handheld in a second if it seamlessly integrates my. Game Pass library, my owned games library, achievements, mm-hmm. save game, you know, cloud save, all that stuff. Uh, that will be just a phenomenal new way to to uh, play Xbox games and to broaden the the actual range, <laughs> the the playing range outside of the living room. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can already play through the cloud with uh, on mobile, but yeah, this this it'll just be awesome. Um, I don't know if. Next month, if June 9th is going to be the day that, that they show off that handheld, but I'm confident that that day is coming, and just whatever day it is, it's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agreed. Max, anything uh, a little more out there for uh, PlayStation State of Play? I know personally, if they happen to sort of re uh, reintroduce the KOTOR remake, which was at a State of Play in 2021, and then... There have been you know, lots of conflicting reports about trouble development being put on hold indefinitely, switching developers, but it's, it's at Saber Interactive now, and the head of Saber recently said that everything's going fine, nothing to see here. What do you think? Uh, that's not the most promising <laughs> thing you could hear. I, you know, again, that got bumped around a bunch. Even, even before the, all of the stuff with Embracer we were hearing about that got you know, kicked between developers. Uh, I'm skeptical that we, we're going to see this ever. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I am too. I, yeah. Uh, can I steal Ryan's answer? Yeah. Can I say I want to see a Sony handheld? Yeah, I, I, I would love I to see know. that too, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. would be nice. Something that occurred to me, is Microsoft the only console manufacturer that hasn't made a handheld? Like, of a... Yeah, which is pretty wild. I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Even even Sega and, you know, NEC for the demographics back in the day yeah. had handhelds. Neo Geo. Yeah, yeah Neo Geo Pocket, yeah. Yeah, I, there were some rumors kicking around that Sony had a, you know, a PS4 Pocket something or other in the works but that could just be some kid writing fan fiction on, on NeoGAF what have you I would I would love for it to be a thing uh, KOTOR remake would be cool too I would love for Sony just to just to you know knock me out of my chair I would I'd love to be blown away and surprised and extremely hyped again it's just been kind of kind of weird doing a weekly show about what's new and exciting in the world of PlayStation when they've been fairly tight-lipped about everything that's coming out and this year has been pretty quiet so that would be cool if that changed yeah 
yeah, it's about time to get some uh, to, to get some announcements coming from Sony. There you have it. Been a, just a few predictions from us for both the uh, Xbox Showcase, PlayStation State of Play, which we're still waiting on official word for, but we do expect to be imminent. Of course, as a reminder, the Xbox Showcase is happening on Sunday, June 9th. You can watch that live in person with Ryan and the Unlock crew at IGN Live, after which Ryan will be joined on stage by Phil Spencer. So it'll be a pretty cool experience. You can get your own tickets at IGN.com slash live. We'll see you there. Come on out and be a part of it. Yep. We have the results from the poll from last episode. We were talking about Square Enix. They're having some, uh, you know, some, some money issues recently. But on a lighter note, we just want to know, what's your, what's your favorite Square Enix franchise? And by a landslide, it is Final Fantasy. Over 61% 60, over of the vote. Beating everything else out by the mile. Kingdom Hearts, Chrono Trigger, Dragon Quest, the Mana series, even ooh, Ogre Battle. Ooh, fewer than 2% of votes, voters picked that one. So Final Fantasy, even though the, you know, the recent ones that are PS5 exclusives were a little bit... Um, underwhelming in terms of the sales that Square Enix was expecting. It's still by far the most popular franchise that Square Enix has. New poll, which of our summer predictions that we've just shared with you are you most excited about? Do you most hope come true? Make sure to vote at IGN.com. The day this episode goes live, we'll share the results with you next episode. That's going to do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to both Max and Ryan. Thank you to Jobert and Ryan and everyone working behind the scenes here in our LA studio to make this episode possible. My name is Damon. We'll be back next week with all the latest gaming hardware news. We'll see you then.